please thank y'all for coming welcome to the july 17th 2017 meeting of the limestone county commission we will call to order uh under public comments we have some appropriation requests i think up first we have miss lynn hart hi lynn how are you if you could come up to the microphone please ma'am Good morning, gentlemen. Thank Good you morning. for allowing me the time to come and talk to you about Kate Athens Limestone Beautiful. I will only take a few minutes of your time. Um, KALB has been an important organization operating in Limestone County as a nonprofit since 1977. We're an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful and Keep Alabama Beautiful and remain in good standing with both organizations. We do not duplicate efforts of any other organization in our community. Through all of our growth and development, the County Commission has supported our efforts and we are grateful. The cuts in our appropriation over the last two years have been accepted without question. Um, however, since our entire budget is less than $70,000, these cuts have, have had a serious impact on our ability to meet our budget. In 2014-15, we received $17,000. In 15-16, $12,000. And in 16-17, $8,000. Every person living in Limestone County benefits from the work we do, whether or not they support KALB directly. Our mission is to empower the citizens of Athens and Limestone County to take greater responsibility for enhancing their community environment, and we do that through education and outreach. KALB's main focus is and always has been education. It is only by educating our youth and adult population regarding the importance of caring for our natural world that we will change attitudes and behaviors. I've personally witnessed tremendous improvements in community awareness about environmental issues since I joined KALB as executive coordinator in 1999. Our outreach does make a difference. <clears throat> KALB staff members visit every fifth and sixth grade class in all city and county schools with the purpose of developing in these students a sense of responsibility for our environment and pride in their community. We provide programs for all grade levels, including preschool. The younger students respond well to our mascot, Sparky and the Talking Tree. KALB also has speaking engagements um, anywhere that we are invited. We have seen major improvements in the appearance of city and county school campuses over the years. It has become difficult to choose winners of the Clean Campus Award, which I assure you was not the case 15 years ago. The best way to teach good stewardship is through volunteer opportunities. There's always something new to learn. <coughs> Roadside and river cleanups are a great way to encourage better attitudes um, with regard to littering. We have several families and groups that voluntarily clean up roads, and two groups recently organized major cleanups, one of them being in Elkmont. According to our last annual report to Keep America Beautiful, KALB generated 3,740 volunteer hours, the value of which is calculated to be over $88,000. We would love to have the commissioners help us in encouraging more county organizations and families to work with us. Our Clean and Green program at the Fiddler's Convention reaches more, many hundreds of Limestone County residents with the message of litter abatement and recycling. More people than you may realize it get the message. Several people come with their own litter bags now. KALB reaches out to our community in as many ways as we can. Our annual Earth Day and Outdoor Expo is a free event that brings fun and learning together. KALB is also present at other events throughout the year, including the Grease Festival, Fiddlers, Senior Fun Fest, North Pole Stroll, Home and Garden Show where we have our tree seedling giveaway, and more. Information is provided to the community at these events as well as through our monthly e-newsletter, KALB's website, and social media pages, radio interviews, and newspaper articles, including our twice-monthly article in the Athens Now. KALB must raise nearly half of our annual budget through fundraising, which we work hard to do. We do this through our membership drive, Duck and Run 5K, Wacky Quacky Ducky Derby, and Duck Decorating Contest. We've added that part this year to try to raise more money. Pause for the environment, sponsorships, and donations. 
Gentlemen, I don't have a story to tell you that would bring you to tears as some other organizations might. I can only remind you that every resident in Limestone County benefits from our organization, again, whether they support us directly or not. On behalf of the KALB Commission, I respectfully request you to consider increasing the county's appropriation to our organization back to the $17,000 we were receiving until two years ago. We also respectfully request that you consider funding half of a countywide household hazardous waste collection, which KALB will plan and execute. Information was emailed to each of you with the details, including costs. I thank you for your time, and I will have copies of all of this available for you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Becky Bentley. She's outside. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Miss Lisa Coleman. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello, how you doing? Thank you for your invitation. Um, not only one invitation, but you actually gave us an opportunity three times to come. I can't say that about all of, of our appropriating authorities. My name is Lisa Coleman. I'm the executive director for the Mental Health Center of North Central Alabama. Although I was given a new title in September of last year, you probably have seen me in your county for the last 23 years. I've served as a program director, a clinical director, a performance improvement director, associate director, and now have become the executive director. So it's my first time to join you this morning. I, since day one with my organization, my leader, Tom Salter, that hired me 23 years ago, applauded you. I continue that applause today. You, out of all the appropriating authorities that we, I answer to, I have seven. I have 21 board members, and we all applaud the job that you do. You've always supported our services and the citizens of Limestone County. So with that said, um, Kay told me to keep it short and sweet. So the mission of the, can the, mission of the commission, the mental health center, is the same thing. We want to serve the citizens. And the mental health service center, of course, serves the most vulnerable. With your dollars last year, we served 412 um, citizens that had no money, no insurance, no way to get services. You did cut us some dollars, and we understood that, but we still appreciated what you did for us, not only just for the citizens, but the facilities, the grounds that we provide the services on. You are amazing. Um, although um, you, uh, we know your county's growing, and congratulations to that. I've seen some studies that Limestone County's in some of the top counties in the state of Alabama that's growing. With that, you know that mental illness is going to grow. So our board respectively is going to ask for the same $60,000 that they asked for before um, for fiscal year 2017, but anything that the county com commission can and do that would just us, about equal all your other six entities combined, wouldn't yes, it, sir. if we did that? Yes, sir. Because I think it's still about the same. City Decatur don't give you a dime. Not a dime. Morgan County gives you, what, 10 or 15? Yes, City of Athens is 10 or 15. I think they went to 15, 10. didn't they? 10 or 15? Yes, sir. And um, you are correct. oddly enough, Moulton give like six thousand dollars, and uh, uh, and with uh, all those what, cuts, what we did we do last year? Him, do you remember what we did last year? Is it twenty five or thirty thousand? Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand dollars. Well, y'all do a great job, and that's one of the biggest biggest issues the state's facing now. The Absolutely. legislature continues pushing refuse to fund mental health and put it in they're putting it in our local jails and we're having to deal with that right. and so many people believe that we're a state agency and we are not a state agency right. we're a 310 board and we depend on the local authorities to help us to serve those people without anything we do have a contract with the state department of mental health but those dollars are strictly earmarked for only certain consumers that have to already go into a state bed which we want to prevent them from getting there because the chaos that's caused if they if they don't get that treatment. What does Morgan County give y'all? Is it 10, 10,000, 15? I have it over there. I think it's 10. That's what I was thinking. I have uh, the independent audit here as well for you to look at. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Not everybody provides us with that. Oh, Thank okay. You. Well, good. Do you have any other questions of me? Y'all can't go into jails right I mean 
we can go into the jails. We just can't bill Medicaid going right. into. We can't bill an insurance going into the jails. So the dollars have to be provided. And we have. I'll just try to keep them going into the jail. We try to do as much yeah. diversion as possible. We have um, our services are a lot different than most counseling centers that you hear about because we do what others cannot do. We provide the wraparound services. We have case managers going into homes of those who do not want to come in for services. Um, if the clients try to fire us because they are so mentally ill and so paranoid and so delusional that they don't want to come in other people to see them, we have in-home teams that go out to them. Um, doctors, nurses, case managers, therapists, whatever it takes to help divert those people from the jails, from the hospitals. Y'all do good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Todd. Oh, and Becky's here too now. Oh, I'm sorry, Becky. Well, each one of would either one of y'all ready is fine with me. <laughs> I'll go ahead and All righty. <clears throat> opportunity to speak today. Uh, this is my first time to address y'all on appropriations and I'm pleased to do it. Yeah, it's easier if you just take the whole thing out. I had to get those last night and it was not what I was looking for. So uh, I have the information here for our 2016-17 um, and then our request for 2017-18 budget. Uh, tourism continues to provide the quality of life events for our community. We pretty much start in April with our historical walks and our bicentennial stroll, uh, which we had tremendous uh, results this year, attendance. We actually had five historical walks this year, and we provide five to six tours each Saturday for those walks. So. Uh, I have uh, really awesome tour guides that are willing to participate each Saturday. They start at 10. They're about an hour, hour and a half. If you get Buzz Estes, you're going to have about a two-hour tour because he enjoys it. Um, so our, uh, we also had a bicentennial event on March 3rd and 4th. It was first for the Rotary, and then we did it for, for the public. Um, it was very well attended, and it gave out some tremendous information. We also are tickled that we're back on the square with our singing, um, singing on the square. This has been the first one last month in two years. So uh, the people showed up, about 200, and um, I understand that even the restaurants were totally packed. <laughs> We had our Indian children to come from um, Mumbai, Mumbai, and they have been coming. This was their fourth year, and we continue to have them come. Um, they're going to try to come in October and bring some principals, and then they'll also be coming back next year. Um, let's see. I, I, I had someone to ask, well, what actually brings people to Athens? Well... We have a lot of things that bring them here. When, uh, if they leave after school, then we have a lot of reunions that we do. And we do packets for those reunions, church, school, and family. They, um, we give them brochures of the events, the things that are going on, things that have happened probably since they were, had left. And they're very surprised to realize that we ha do have as much going on as we do. Um, I have a couple of stories that you can read on your own. I don't want to spend up a lot of your time. Travelers spent $129 million in Limestone County last year, in Limestone County. They provided, they were responsible for 1,569 jobs in the hospitality area. So that's going to be your, your restaurants, your hotels, uh, events, things of that nature. We, uh, that, that's an increase of 
for our hotels, restaurants, shopping, and transportation. The statewide tourism grew 5.4. We grew 3.9. So that's a, that says volumes for our, our county. Um, I talk a little bit about things that we have going on and how our office is working. And then I have my budget. Um, I'd like for you to consider the budget as um, the way it, it had been. I know that we had a, a difference last year, but if we can go back to that, I can actually hire another person for my office, which will make a tremendous difference in how we get out and, and reach a lot more people. Um, I also have added this little sheet that shows you where our visitors come from. I did have a temporary person last year that was very techy, and this is just a sampling of about three months of where our folks come from, and it's tremendous. I, I have them from Germany, we have them from Canada, we have them from India, and all points in between. Um, then there's a page in here to where you might see in the budget that I received a $7,000 grant from Alabama Mountain Lakes, and this is just the, uh, the request sheet that I provided you with uh, in that as well. Let's see. I also have you some information on what's going on. What tourism director would not tell you what's going on for the next couple of months? So if you have some questions... To address those. So uh, you're not you're requesting level funding, right? If I yes, if if at all possible. And we took you down last year, right? Yeah, half. Yeah, you gave me a, an appropriation of seven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars a quarter. Do you have a copy of your financial reports? Um. Other than the budget? Other than the budget. No, I do not. I'm going to need to see that before sure. I make a decision. Okay. Yes, that's not uh, – I, I wanted to try and meet the presentation time, so that's why I'm, I don't have it with me at this point. I'll work another weekend and get it together for you. What I'll – Is that your 990? Do you all have to fill out a 990, right? No. Not that I know of. A 990? Yeah. Are y'all 501c3? Uh-huh, 501c3. Okay. I can talk to the accountant and see yeah. if he has it. Yeah. Okay. You probably do. Okay. Oh, all right. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, Miss Becky. I We're running away from you. We're changing the plan. And I, I would have just had the walk over here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you. I am. I am. Thank you for the chance to speak to you all this morning. We are asking for level funding this year, $20,000. Um, I included two brochures that are part of the material that we use. Um, the first brochure that you're looking at there is the brochure that we use in the school system, the little colored <coughs> bags. Um, that's what we use in the school with the kids. So when I talk about that program, you'll have that. And the second is Darkness to Light, and that's some of the material that we teach to the school system, to the adults, and in the community um, about sexual abuse. So. Um, all our funding that we receive from you, you, we use as match money for grants. So last year you um, generally gave us $20,000 for the year. We used that as match money for grants, and we were able to um, actually make a 800% return on that investment um, through an ADECA grant that was $168,000. And this year we have received um, $195,000 from ADECA for the upcoming year. Um, we use that money to do all our um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, 
kids that witness rape, domestic violence, the forensic interviews we do, all our work with law enforcement, um, with DHR, everything that is basically housed in our office there, parent training. Um, <coughs> we also have um, a Children's Trust Fund grant that we received this year that is was awarded again for this next year that is $47,000. We use that money to work with the Limestone County Schools, and we're in the schools K through 8th grade. That is the brochures that I gave you. Um, we have a master's level worker who goes into the school system and is in this classroom two times a year, and she teaches um, a prevention-based program on sexting, bullying, child abuse prevention, physical abuse prevention, and it's, it's basically... It works up, so in kindergarten, you know, it's age appropriate, of course, and then as they get to be the eighth grade, they start talking more about sexting and those kind of things. So this past year, we had several kids, numerous kids actually, that came forward after they had, were in the class with her and stated that they had been abused and they didn't know it. Um, they didn't know what abuse was and they didn't realize what was going on with them was abuse. Those children reports were then made to DHR and several of those kids were then removed from the home unfortunately and a couple of parents are now facing criminal charges because of that. So as sad as that is, it's it's good that that program is now in place and we are able to see that the children are safe. Yes it is. That program is also, we were working with the city schools. Last year, we didn't do it with the city schools. We did one, we did kindergarten. But this year, the city schools wants to implement it with us as well. And so we're, we're working with them to determine how much we can do with them. The county schools last year provided some funding, but this year, we've not asked the county schools to do any funding. We're gonna fund it all ourselves. And the city schools, um, we're gonna fund that as well too. Um, so we don't ask for any funding from the county schools or the city schools. In addition to those funding streams, we, we, try, we get several small grants, but I want you all to be aware that we, get, um, we received a grant this past year from Seal Cave <coughs> Foundation. It was for um, almost $43,000. they are great at what they do for the community. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. We, but, we weren't really aware of them um, until this year, but it, it's for counseling, just short term, not what... Um, Lisa does at the Mental Health Center is for trauma-focused <coughs> counseling that's just for our kids and um, it's specific to abuse so it's well, this, for a year. What's so important about this $20,000 is basically seed money for you to be able to, to, to be able to apply for these grants to have the matching part. That's right that's all we use it for. Right. Well I think it's great over 800 percent return on the investment of $20,000 that's that's really 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 good Ms. Bentley, I wanted to ask you, I've, I've got to ask them the same question that I had written down in my notes and I forgot. What does, does the city of Athens give you anything? This past year they cut us to 8,000. Eight. We received 10 the year, if several years before that, but this past year they cut us to 8. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Can I say something? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, can I ask this question first? I don't get a chance to stand here very often, and I'm going to take advantage of it for a second. Well, step up to the mic, and that way everybody can see you. Do you mind at all if I do this? No. Okay. It's are, are you both media? Or can I do something and, and let it be off the record for a second? Well, you're being, all like, you're being, being live streamed. Live. <laughs> That's what I want to Cut do. the well, microphone off. Uh, I can't do they'll, it. They'll talk to you afterward, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I want, I, yeah. I want y'all to hear something. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, as, as county commissioners, you know, we're here for public service. Everybody in this room is, and um, and I guess I'm going to have to. I want y'all to be aware that people in this community do not realize the abuse that goes on here. And I had something I wanted to show you, but unfortunately, I'm not going to do that. Um, much uh, things that you see on Dateline, they happen in this county. You don't realize that. Um, and knowledge is power and so you know I have something I'll, I'll show you if you want to see it later um, you come to our office please stop by our office and we'll show you and we'll talk to you but you know 
everything you do impacts the lives of kids and everything our law enforcement does, everything DHR does, the things the judges see, the things attorney sees, Mr. Macklin sees in court, um, those things do happen in our county, not in other counties, not in bigger cities. Um, and I just want you to be aware of that and realize that um, even though we're a small town, those things happen here, right here, and I can tell you, you know, all kinds of stories, not for effect, but because knowledge is power. And please think about that, everybody in this room, when you are with children in your own life and when you are with children that you see out in town. Um, and, and take some of those brochures. And if a child comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I've been abused, listen to them. Um, and stop by and see us and let us give you a little more information and maybe some um, specific things that I can't really show you here, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I heard a statistics it was in a sermon that uh, the 65 quarter and the 20 quarter through here that that was one of the most intensive trafficking quarters in the nation. Mm -hmm. Is that That's true? That is true. Okay. Mm -hmm. For sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're not insulated from the world's problems and stuff right here. And and we know probably a whole lot more than you would think because when you do sit in one of these seats, you hear from everybody mm -hmm. in the county because so many people. I tell somebody everybody needs to try 95,000 bosses and 270 employees because that's what I have. And mm -hmm. uh, some folks think I can fix everything, and unfortunately I cannot. I wish I could, but I can't. Mm -hmm. But I do hear a lot. Mm -hmm. and. While I, it's impossible for me to tell you how the, this commission is going to vote, I'd bet about 99.9% .9 you're going to get your $20,000, if well, I had to guess. So. That wasn't so much about my $20,000. That was just about, honestly, you know. Um, well, it was an impassioned plea, I, you know, I, it, for what it was, to let people know that. Just be aware. Yeah, be aware. Not only be aware, but don't, don't you know. Like you said, it's, it's. You know, I'd like to tell people the city of Athens is Mayberry on steroids, and mm -hmm. it really is to a large extent, but at the same time, it's just like anything in today's world. There's a city or underbelly to every place, mm -hmm. every, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't, but it is. And, that's, that's very true. And, but I do appreciate you coming today. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Real quick, let me ask. Tourism, city of Athens. Yes, sir. They gave me Okay. Miss Hart. Last year they gave us twenty-five thousand. And my last one, Miss Coleman. Thank you. All righty, Pamela. Do we have any more public comment? No, I do not. Okay. Would you mind calling the roll, please, ma'am? Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Turner. Here. Commissioner Black. Here. Commissioner Harrison. Here. They're all present. Mr. Black, could you lead us in our pledge? I will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll move on with the meeting, Pamela. First item, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes from July 5th and 12th, 2017. Do I hear such a motion? I make the motion. A motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, I will call for the vote. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Turner? Aye. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item... I'll ask for a motion to approve the claims in the amount of $875,468.31 as presented to the commission. Do I hear such motion? So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Hill. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Turner? Aye. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We have no resolutions or orders.
<coughs> under contracts, agreements, and grants, I'll ask for a motion to concur with the award of the contract for resurfacing Parker Road from State Road 2, which is U.S. Highway 72, to Newcut Road, widening and resurfacing a Baker Hill Road from Newcut Road to Elk River Mills Road, and resurfacing Elk River Mills Road from Baker Hill Road uh, over the Elk River to Reed Contracting in the amount of $613,066.97. Do I hear such motion? I'll make a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Harrison. Do I hear a second? Second. I have in unison with <laughs> Mr. Turner and Mr. Black, whichever one you feel like you want to write down, Pamela. Any discussion? I'll just reiterate what I said uh, in the work session the other, the other time. This is just taking from this current or my year's uh, federal aid funds and um, you know, I think Mr. Turner, I think, said last year that we would only use those funds. If I have an overrun in my district, then I cover those overruns. If, if everybody... If everybody plays that same way, it should never be a problem. That's right. And uh, the, the initial proposal here, or the estimate, included funds from Stanley's, but the bids came in under that, so we will not be using, and I would not use funds from Stanley's years. Thank you. That's it. Sounds good. Do we have, without any more discussion, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Black. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item, a last for motion to approve the 2007 Chevrolet Silverado pickup truck lease for the Sheriff's Department for an annual rent of $1. Do I hear such motion? I make a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to suspend the rules orders to add two agreements to the agenda. I make the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. It's kind of a, it's nice to be able to ask for this. I think this is the only time that you've ever had three entities that I was told that, that went in together to do the project. This is uh, City of Madison, City of Huntsville, and Limestone County uh, is all pitching in. Uh, and I'll ask for a motion to approve the agreement between the City of Huntsville, City of Madison, and Limestone County Commission for a resurfacing of Huntsville Browns Ferry Road from Mooresville Road to Burgering Road. Do I hear such a motion? I'll make the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. And, and uh, Commissioner Black and Commissioner Turner worked hard to get this. I think Mark, you'll concur. <laughs> to get this done. Worked very, this took very a lot hard. Of and I commend them for their efforts. They did a. That road needs it in the worst kind of way. It's got all kind of traffic up and down it, but they worked hard to get it done. And, I, I'm and I'll commend the engineering department for working absolutely. to put this together because they saved us it's a hard. bunch of money had we had to go outside. It was, uh, I hate to brag on Jason, <laughs> but I got to on this one, Steve. Well, we had, uh, I, did, I want to thank two people. I want to thank Mayor Finley, the city of Madison, and his engineering department. Uh, they really helpful, really did work well with Mark and Bryant and our group. And then uh, Mayor Battle from the city of Huntsville, same thing. Uh, there was ne there was a question in the beginning if we were going to be able to get the money until we talked to them and they promised us they were going to get us the money. And that feels really good because uh, I don't know, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do Huntsville Browns Ferry and I get 10 calls a week at a minimum about Huntsville Browns Ferry. So I really appreciate the city of Madison and the city of Huntsville for helping. Yeah, they the other night at the when Huntsville finally approved this, their council president made a big deal out of it about the three of us working together, which is which is a big deal. Um, particularly on the eastern side of the county, Huntsville and Madison are both encroaching further and further. Uh, all we need them to do is just be ready to take care of whatever they take on. And uh, in this case, they are helping. So I hope we can do some more in the future. Thank you. There's no more discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. 
Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item, I'll ask for a motion to approve TARCOG, Alabama Department of Senior Service, Senior Community Service Employment Program, Host Agency Agreement, and Senior Service America Incorporated, Senior Community Service Employment Program, Host Agency Agreement for Senior Aides for each Senior Center, authorized Council and Agent Susan Director to sign as Host Agency Representative. Basically get the money from TARCOG, and then, but we have to sign an agreement to host it for our stuff. I'll make the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Harrison. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Turner? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We have no budget revisions, no emergency purchases, <coughs> no board appointments, and no bids to award. Under personnel actions, I'll ask for a motion to revise staffing plan to delete network administrator grade 11 and add network support specialist 2 grade 9 in the IT department. I hear such motion. I move. Second. A motion by Mr. Hill. I have a second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Turner? Aye. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item, I'll ask for a motion to approve job description for Network Support Specialist 2, Grade 9. Did I hear such a motion? So moved. A motion by Mr. Hill. Did I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Black. In discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Turner? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. There are no merit increases to come before the commission. And lo and behold, we actually have an engineer, a real-life engineer here to give the engineer's report. Okay. All right. We have um, Legacy Grove Edition 9B subdivision. Uh, it's a major subdivision. This is for final approval. We went out and inspected it last week. Um, everything looked good. Um, and there's 41 lots. This is in District 2. Um, it's uh, the north side of Newby Road um, and uh, adjacent to Legacy Grove 9A. That Legacy Grove 9 actually got split, split a few months ago because they were trying to get additional lots so they split it so this is the remainder of that subdivision all righty i'll ask for a motion to approve the legacy grove edition 9b subdivision do i hear such a motion i make a motion a motion by mr turner do i hear a second i'll second i have a second by mr harrison any discussion there's no discussion i'll call for the vote commissioner turner aye commissioner harrison aye commissioner hill aye commissioner black aye Motion carries unanimously. Other business, I'll ask for a motion to approve the following inventory change to transfer from EMA to the Sheriff's Department for 2006 Dodge Durango. Do I hear such motion? I make the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item, I'll ask for a motion to sell the following <coughs> gun deals. District 1, 2009 John Deere Tractor. Do I hear such motion? So moved. A motion by Mr. Hill. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Black. Aye. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next item, I'll ask for a motion to approve the following change order for LDOT project number TAPAA-13903, refurbishment of the Limestone County Archives, amount of $3,261.50, state portion, which is 80%. Uh, 80% of the state portion will be 262520. The county portion will be $656.30. Do I hear such a motion? I make the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Black. Do I hear a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Well, I have a second by Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> if there's no discussion, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Black? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner Hill? Aye. 
Commissioner Turner. Uh, folks, you get you nervous. I was like, is there something I don't know about this crap yeah, bar or something? I, I looked down. I was making sure ours went to $65,630. I was trying to get... <laughs> Thought it was all pretty smooth, oh, work well. station, but it was just well, here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> let's get some public hearing. I'll ask the motion to approve to set a public hearing to be held on September fifth, two thousand seventeen, regarding the Excuse vacation me. of a portion of right away on Lakeview Street. Do I hear such motion? I will make that motion. Have a motion, Mr. Harrison. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Commissioner Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Commissioner Black. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We'll now move the report of our officers. Commissioner Hill. Yes, I know we're going over budgets, and uh, I'm like Steve. It would be helpful if we had financial reports uh, with the request. Uh, and I, some, some of it may not be public knowledge, but it would be helpful. Also, we're doing preventive maintenance out in District 1. We're bush and patching and ditching, and I always stress the uh, watch for the folks. There's a lot of wrecks uh, throughout, throughout the county, so I just ask everybody to be real careful when they see people out working. Thank you. Okay. You up? Yeah. Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Turner? Yeah, I, I need a... I'll be making a motion to... Resurface Holmes Lane. It's over off of Capshaw or uh, County Line Road. 475 feet uh, at a cost of $2,500. And then uh, McLemore Circle. And it's the portion of McLemore Circle that's just south of Elkins Road that runs from east to west. It's uh, 2,325 feet. And the cost on that is 2,700. And uh, the reason it's kind of high is because we're going to have to do some base work, then we're going to chip seal it and level with binder before we put the wiring surface on it to try to get it right. But, uh, what kind of surface are you putting on it? Plant mix. Plant mix. With our crew, our, our guys will be doing the work, so I, I make that motion. I think we'll have to spin the rules first. Will there be any others coming out of the you need the other no, not for me. I was gonna say you just yeah, I want to ask for something uh, during mine. I mean, uh, but it's not a road. Not the, similar to. No. Okay, yeah, I think the uh, proper way would be to go ahead and suspend the rules. So right. It wasn't already on the agenda. I'll ask for a motion to suspend the rules to resurface the following roads in uh, for the aforementioned roads in District Two. I make a motion we suspend the rules. A motion. Second. A motion. Motion by Mr. Turner. I have a second by Mr. Hill. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Turner. Aye. Commissioner Hill. Aye. Mr. Black. Aye. Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. I have a motion by Mr. Turner to uh, resurface the uh, Northwest Maxmore Circle from East Limestone Road West to Maxmore Drive at a cost of $27,800. Plant Mitch resurface Holmes Lane. Mo Railroad Bed West to Dead End in a distance 475 feet long at a cost of $2,500. Do I hear a second? second? I have a second by Mr. Hill. Any discussion? There's no discussion. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Turner? Aye. Mr. Hill? Aye. Mr. Black? Aye. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. you have anything further? Yeah. Uh, Reed contracted started this morning on Nick Davis Road. So the, if you're traveling Nick Davis, you need to try to probably make plans to take another route because it's going to be busy out there for the at le, I would guess at least the next month uh, uh, that, that'll go kind of like uh, the A-Trip project for East Limestone Road did and the Nick Davis A-Trip project they'll do any milling and patching and then that'll be covered by a layer of chip seal and then the wearing layer so at some point there's going to be loose stone for you to avoid on that road and uh, Huntsville Browns Ferry work is scheduled to begin Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. So I'll, that'll, I'll be out there today so, marking patching locations. So, so that that road's also going to be busy, which that affects uh, District Two and Commissioner Black's district. A lot of traffic on those roads. So if you uh, normally travel them, you may want to try to find you a new route for the next few weeks. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Black. All right, we have our uh, roads that we were prepping complete to have paved. Uh, 
guess we're going to start that here within the next week or so. Or Charlie Watts. Charlie Watts. Um, I, I haven't received another update from him, but the last that I heard was end of July. That'll so. work. That'll be good. Um, I had written down here the Huntsville Browns Ferry work. Uh, we're just doing regular road maintenance. We're also uh, assisting TVA with a, a project that they're doing down on Hatchet Road where they have uh, been able to acquire some rock uh, to go into one of their uh, parks there that they have, and uh, we're going to haul the, the rock for them. Uh, it is uh, used by a lot of people, and it's very similar to what they had done in men's district and our district. I guess we're probably the only two that have that access. So. That's it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Harrison. Uh, we finished up Taylor Oaks. Uh, I think they're sweeping it today. Uh, one thing that we, and that was the first time that we'd used a cement truck out of Birmingham uh, to grind in the base. Uh, one thing that we did learn uh, came abundantly clear to me as we were doing that. Uh, we used single axle trucks, uh, our two single axle and the, the triaxle truck. And to do a good job, on the uh, on our chip seal, you, you know, it, it's almost going to require the use of single axle uh, dump trucks. And I know, I know we're, we're depending on Charlie Watts now for the, the triple seal, but if we're to develop that in house, uh, he's he's a premier chip seal guy, and he has all single axle trucks. And so I just wanted to let y'all know that probably for us to do a, even approach anywhere close to what Charlie Watts is doing. We're probably going to have to use single axle trucks. Another thing I learned is a rumor in the tax uh, overhaul proposals that construction industry is really pushing hard to eliminate that 12.5% uh, federal excise tax that they charge on the triaxle trucks. And I don't know what's going to come about from that, but if we lose that, that will severely affect our triaxle program. So we need to keep an eye on that because that's the only only thing that makes that program work um, so but but I, I thought each one of us had a single axle truck but I think Steve's the only one that has a single axle yeah I got one uh, I don't know if it's got a spreader bar I don't think it's got a spreader bar on it okay so that's something you keep in the back of your minds as we as we go forward it, on our thrust to, to develop chip seal expertise uh, Buchamp Branch is uh, Quinn Road over Buchamp Branch. That's closed now, uh, and that will probably be at a minimum of three months, at a maximum of a year. So there's a lot of a lot of play in that. Uh, but so you know, people make other arrangements to go around. Another thing I'd like approval for, and I don't know if it takes this um, uh, the suspension of the rules. Okay. Well, I'll, let me describe what it is. And Scott's, uh, you know, that bag has the topsoil. Okay, they uh, bag topsoil like you buy at Lowe's. They have a Birmingham facility and uh, AMRV, and I'm on that board, the Alabama Mountains, Rivers, Rivers and Valleys. Uh, they have a lot of community gardens and it, a lot of schools. Uh, West Limestone has, Ardmore I think has one, and a lot of the schools around have these community gardens. Well, Scott's provides free of charge their expired topsoil. I didn't realize topsoil could expire, but there must be some treatment in there. They provide that free of charge, but it's down in Birmingham, and AMRV, uh, they've got a request for two pallets, and then there's a lot of schools that I'm getting, getting them to work up a list of how many that can use it and uh, they would provide it free of charge if I go down there and get it and what I would like approval for is the permission to go to use a county truck and flatbed to go down there and get it and it's Do you need a vote for that well I mean you can't use gas tax money for it and it reimburse be, be less than three hundred dollars just take it out of what fund do you Do you need a vote on that? Not as long as it's in the general fund money already. If it's not a huge okay, well, I just want to make sure money. that that uh, people know what I'm doing. So, right. well, you're right because yeah. you can't take it out of gas. Yeah, can't take it out of gas. Is that going to schools now? Or? It can. Uh, it, the West Limestone has one. I think you've got Ardmore's got one. Don't but I was going to get a list. Of, 
Huh? I thought Johnson had more. Elementary. But see, the master gardeners have a have a bunch. Johnson's doing an outside yeah, classroom thing. They had a little thing where it built on in the little it built I just wondered that. You know, I just. Yeah. But I got to do it within uh, the next two <coughs> weeks. Jason's house or something. Okay. I've got one. I got one thing I forgot to. You always do. That's okay. Old Highway 20 bridge that we have out oh, uh, this weekend. Uh, my phone rang off the hook. We've got uh, State Senator Arthur Orr is now uh, beating the drums. He has contacted uh, Mr. Curtis with the uh, North District uh, Aldot, who in return is going to be contacting uh, Mr. Cooper, who is over Aldot. Department of Transportation. Uh, I've also uh, had many farmers and many homeowners and many business people over the last two years contact me, and now they are uh, forming a committee and getting a group together. I'd like to reiterate that on December the 25th, 2015, when this bridge went out, it became an issue that I didn't have any control over. Uh, we were able to get 80% funding from the feds. We were able to get 20% funding from the state through Representative Matt McCutcheon. Uh, they came back with another small portion that it had gone up, and Representative McCutcheon also found that money for us. So uh, from what I understand, uh, the state at some point says that we're waiting on the feds, and the feds say that we're waiting on the state. And I'm waiting on whoever it is in charge of tearing that bridge down and putting the new one up. So not just for the people in the audience, but for these two nice people sitting over here on the side taking notes. That's who I wanted to know all this information. So thank you very much. And to reiterate with Jason, there's no, we're standing on gold. We're ready. We have all been. The money's there. No, it's, it's been there since 2016. It's just getting them going. Thank you all for coming. I want to mention one thing. You know, CASA is dissolving. They got one more meetings and all that, so they were doing away with the mud volleyball thing. And, uh, Michelle and my wife Gina and Tammy Waddell and Susan McGrady and they all decided they'd take it on and they did and we had 50 teams over the weekend Brandon was like me, Brandon Wallace our 911 director, he was like me covered in mud up our referee uh, thanks Brandon uh, I, a lot uh, Alicia Sanders, our HR director she was over referees and she left her muddy and Michelle left her muddy and Gina left her muddy and uh Hey, we had one group all the way from South Carolina, didn't they? They planned their beach trip around so they could come down here and stay in Athens night and play mud volleyball and go on. And, but I think we, we end up grossing over 15000 We're you know still got to pay the you know water bill and stuff like that. Probably end up making ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. But that would, that's something that would have went away had it not been for those ladies that stepped up and then had us being like Brandon that told us what to do, and we did. So I applaud you all very much because it is. That's, that's that much more money going to the American Cancer Society. But through our relay team that I think is going to be in the neighborhood of how much, Michelle? Uh, it'll be over 30000 this year. It'll be over 30000 this year that they've raised. So thank you very much. And with that, we will recess until 10 a.m. on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017 at the Washington Street Courthouse Annex at 310 West Washington Street, Athens, Alabama. Thank you all. Thank you.